got six o'clock and I see a quorum, so I'm going to call the April 14th, 2020 governing board meeting for CV fiber to order. Um, before I go, uh, before we go into the agenda, I just want to make sure that everybody has kind of a grasp of um, how to interact with this. If you are an, if you're an attendee, um, I, I'm actually going to make Phil a panelist because he came in under the public. Make Chuck that him as well. Make them panelists so they can have the same privileges that everybody else does. Um, if you're an attendee. <clears throat> You can use the questions panel and uh, send questions by text, and you can just say, "I'd like to say something about this," and I can then um, I can then turn on your your mic access. You can ask the question. Then when you're done, I'll mute you, mute you again, and then we can go on to um, the folks who are on the board talking. But um, I just ask if you could. Uh, if you would please uh, mute yourself if you're not talking on a particular item, um, it just makes things easier, less noisy. Um, that's my my experience. Um, the other thing that we're going to do differently tonight is because we're attending remotely, um, and everybody's attending remotely. Um, I'm going to do a roll call by town. So if we have something to vote on, I'll, I'm just going to start and go alphabetically through and say, uh, Barry City, I'll hear an I or nay, Barry Town, I or nay, and so on and so on. Um, and hopefully that's not too, um, hopefully that's not too awkward. Um, if it becomes awkward, um, maybe we can work something else out, but, uh, I think, I think it should work reasonably well. Uh, Jeremy, won't you have to questions? unmute everyone in order to accomplish that? Everybody, everybody has the ability to unmute themselves right now. I cannot see anything. I, I can hear you very loud, but I can't see you. Okay, you can't see me. So go up, up to there's a control panel. Um, you should see something. Uh, there's a place to turn on webcams so that you should oh, see. It's a whole different panel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay, I see Chuck coming on now. And so, yeah, and so what, what I'll do is, uh, and if we miss somebody the first pass around, um, we'll just, we'll, we'll catch up with them. And if, ever, if somebody's silent, we'll just, hopefully, I don't think there's anything contentious tonight anyway, so hopefully we'll be able to move through this pretty smoothly. Okay, so um, just make sure that you all know how to mute and unmute yourself right now. Um, so it looks like about half of you are self-muted. That's That's good, I think. Most everybody has a headset or something that's going to reduce the echo and the noise. So if you have barking dogs, screaming children, et cetera, et cetera, you, you know the truth. Okay. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, um, I need to add one about just a brief discussion about Duxbury. Um, and we'll do that after. Um, Maybe after the, the clerk appointment, or um, I, I don't think it'll take very long, but we'll uh, we'll we'll do that. Okay. So um, public comment. Is there any anybody who would like to comment on anything that is not on the agenda? Sort of extra long pause for people to unmute and fiddle with the tech. Okay. Hearing none, uh, I think we we can be willing to entertain public comment if anybody does have any uh, later on just because they couldn't get the their self unmuted or whatever. <clears throat> Treasurer's report. So I will put my name next to this one again because sadly today Nathan resigned. So we have uh, another appointment to make and that's the treasurer. Um, why don't you all think about which of you um, are going to be that, and I'm going to do the treasurer's report because uh, I looked at the bank accounts earlier today. <clears throat> we have $16,374.41 in checking. That's after the Think Vermont grant was uh, deposited last week or the week before. Um, and that's also after paying for our insurance and paying the attorneys. There's $25.05 in the savings account. 
and there remains uh, $2,637.92 in the Snowball fundraising account. Um, and that reflects an increase of, <clears throat> since last month, of $113.30 um, across two donations. Uh, any treasure-ish questions that I can hopefully answer? Did that also pay for the PO box? Uh, the PO box is not, as far as I as far as I know, been ordered or paid okay. for anything. So, Jerry, uh, and Jeremy, this is Jerry. Hey, Jerry. How are you? Good. I have a question about how we're going to pay inter aisle. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if sixteen thousand covers what they're expecting. I don't know for sure. Okay. So, yeah. So we um, we <clears throat> have the ability to, um, as I understand it, and I worked this out with with Fred. I thought is that his first deliverable. He was going to provide a half deliverable, and that would let us. So, who's ever got the background noise? Would you please self mute? Um, the um he was going to give us a half deliverable part way to the um, feasibility study so he's going to send us a bill and we were going to pay that and then what we could then do is um request a reimbursement from usda we still have funds from usda that can be used for this and then once the feasibility study is done then we can request reimbursement from um uh, our broadband innovation grant so that was that was the plan. That's what I had agreed to, and what's in the updated contract with Fred. So great. if he's it sounds asking, like it worked. If he's not, yeah, I'm just I'm just hoping that he's not expecting to get the whole kit and caboodle in a big single check because that's just it's just not going to happen. No, no, he's not. Um, the last time we we spoke, it's it sounded very similar to what you just described, and we're expecting a uh, that preliminary deliverable from him. As you'll hear later on, we're expecting that in a few days, um, perhaps a little longer, and then and then we'll move on with that. So I just wanted to to check in with the treasurer to see how that's okay. going to work out. <laughs> Thank you. Just yeah, just think of the power, Jerry. You could wield that treasurely power too, if you like. Um, we got any money yet from USDA? We keep on doing quarterly submittals. I just don't know whether you're drawing down anything. So um, I will be sending, I, I have to send that uh, tomorrow, the deadline's tomorrow. Um, because we have not had any expenses that fell under the project that we described to USDA, we have not had any reimbursements from USDA. Uh, the, uh, the attorney fees are administrative and the insurance fees or the cost of the insurance are also administrative. I do not believe that was part of what we um, packaged as part of that grant. So. Um, we are drawing it down as far as some of the in-kind work that I've accounted for, for example, from, from you, um, and I, we're, any, we're nearing the end of that. So as soon yeah. as we get Fred to tell us his hours and his costs and whatever, I can then go back and say, here's, here's what we spent, here was the cost, and uh, um, write us a check then. And there's a not super fast turnaround time, but... I assured Fred that the turnaround time was going to be within the 30 days that he was expecting to get paid of, from data invoice. Okay, it's too bad. I didn't know we could, he could submit something we could have so, submitted to. Yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah, thank God. Yeah, so... Uh, so I, but but the thing is, in order to submit to USDA, we have to pay it. So if he's got something partial, that's that's under hopefully under fifteen thousand um, dollars. Yeah, that a partial invoice like now, and I can I can write him a check right now. Um, and once that happens, then I can get it. I can start the reimbursement product process through USDA. It's just that the the quarterly reports are going to be. Um, are still going to be reports, but the I can I think I can request one reimbursement per month. I believe that's that's the that's the deal. So, um, yeah, we're 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 ready to go and get reimbursed for that whenever. I would just need to look at the uh, look at the details. Anything else on funds or finances or anything? Okay. 
Um, one thing that I have uh, on my plate to do because I'm another uh, authorized user of uh, Snowball is to finally figure out how to get that the 26, 37, 92 over into checking. We have a deposit account set there, but there's some, I'm not the administrator of that account. I am like an authorized user, but I don't know that I have the ability to do the, the actual deposit. So that will be a, a hurdle I will work with, uh, work with Nathan to get through hopefully in the next week or two. Okay. Jeremy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, sorry, I tried to jump in there once before and uh, I think I had my system on mute on. Um, so uh, Michael and I were wondering about uh, tax forms for donors for the 2019 calendar year. Uh, neither of us had received any documentation about our donations. Uh, and and we reached out to Nathan a few times and, and gotten radio silence. So I'm hoping uh, with this transition, we can address that matter as well too, please. Sure. Yeah. So if you could, um, if you could do me a favor, it'd be easier for me to track down the uh, the checks or the donation. If you can tell me when you sent that, and then I will, um, I'll track that down, and I can generate that paperwork. I mean, my audio. Sounds good. Okay. So let me put that on my list of things to do. 2019. Where's donation the receipts. Where's the audio? Okay. Well, we're listening to audio. Where's the video? Uh, yeah, if you're working on getting video set up, uh, it sounds like Alan, there is a, um, there's another panel that you'll want to add. Um, there's another panel you'll, you'll want to add that's sort of, uh, it may be collapsed, that will be, uh, that will give you the op option to show everybody's webcam and to set up your own webcam if you so choose. Okay. I don't need the webcam. As long as I have the audio, I should be fine. It says okay. webcam cases are already currently being used. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So I guess well, I guess with this we get a limited number of. That's odd. I've 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 done this with a lot more before. So Maybe, you get to uh, see my lovely basement. I should be. Very <laughs> handsome. Yeah. Yeah. What is that going to do? Most okay. Then must. Oh, there's Ray. Well, if there's anybody that wants to be on on the webcam and can't currently, looks like there's a couple people that have webcams that are just set as inactive. So. That fine. That's okay. Okay. I think we need to change stuff. Just you know how I can mute. Alrighty. All right. So uh, let's move on to um, clerk appointment, and I think we could, if we can, we get us parade of volunteers we can maybe appoint a treasurer as well so any any takers or nominations for the clerk i mean given that uh, yeah, uh chuck's been taking good notes and we are now re recording this it's going to be easy enough to go back and um, look at this notes don't have to be detailed the clerk is really more of a statutory um, responsibility at this point um, all of the mail, the accounts, everything's going to my address, so I don't intend to change that until we get a PO box. Um, so, for just... what it's worth, uh, I did have a community member from Barry, I believe, reach out to me with interest in uh, volunteering her time and energy toward the initiative. Uh, I reached back out to her, asking, you know, hey, we've got two openings right now. I guess it will be three. Um, and I haven't, you know, heard back from her just yet, so I don't know if either of the, the possibilities for engagement uh, that I, I threw out her way are going to interest her. One was the clerk, the other was we are still looking for another person on the communications committee as well. Um, and so those are the ones I mentioned to her, um, but uh, I can reach back out to her. That was just uh, a few days ago, so, you know, um, uh, I think uh, if I hit her up again in a couple of days, we might be able to see if she's still interested. Uh, if we want to wait to try to move on that from community members, obviously, you know, I think we might need to do something temporary in the meantime. Yeah, that's that's my, my sense too. If we can just get somebody so that we have that covered and if we have a, a replacement then, um, that will be, I think that's going to be best. So. Did you mention to her that there is a stipend? I did not because we didn't 
quite have clarity on what the amount was out of that, and I couldn't find it in the notes. I actually tried to include that information, but uh, I, I need I need to find out exactly what the information is on that, what the, the amount is before I start offering it up, I think. Yeah, so we had an amount authorized in, in the budget for, for that. Um, <laughs> And I, I think we'd be willing to cover mileage and sort of a, a reasonable, um, you know, per month stipend, provided that everything was actually getting done. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what that is, but it's going to be on the same on the same scale as like a select board stipend. So, uh, hundred bucks a month, maybe. I mean, we again, I can cover mileage. I don't think that's a that's a problem. Um, but it might be just something just to sweeten the pot so that, I mean, ultimately we're all still gonna be volunteers. Nobody is a paid employee really yet, aside from, you know, Interisle is the consultant, but uh, you know, if they're willing to help, that's really what we're looking for. And we can just sort of give them a nod that that, that position might require slightly more effort um, than sort of showing up to these, you know, monthly meetings and saying I or nay. Do, do you want to confirm those amounts and get back to me, uh, or can I run with those amounts? Are you quite certain of them? Um, I, I, I'm not certain. I mean, I think we authorized five thousand dollars for the year. I'm just um, one of yeah, the next we did. things that we had to go ahead. Sorry, yes, we did authorize five thousand dollars for the year, but that was on the assumption that there would be like a monthly thing that we paid, and whoever was getting it was, as you say, doing the work. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know so, I don't know yeah. how to explain. One one of the things that that I, that was for me and Susan to take back, or to bring back to the board at some point was, what does that monthly stipend look like? And uh, shortly thereafter, she got busy with other things and was not able to continue. So that was it was moot at that point. Um, I'm, I mean, unless I'm hearing anybody say uh, otherwise, I think a hundred dollars a month would not be out of line. Plus, m you know, reasonable <laughs> mileage, you know, just like to and from meetings or picking stuff up at the PO box, et cetera. And looks like uh, Ray posted the uh, um, the job description that we had previously posted. And and honestly, a lot of those responsibilities, you know, those are statutory responsibilities, but given the sort of hot potato the pos these positions have been lately um you know i've just been i've just been doing this stuff so 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 arguably yeah the clerk is the custodian for files records and documents and and if you're not seeing what seeing what i'm seeing it's in um it's in the uh, the chat i don't know if you can see that that chat window that that, that might have been sent to organizers only uh oh if you want the um, the latest description, it's up on the website. I just sent a link to organizers and panelists, and I believe you are all set up as panelists at this point, so you should see. Oh it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray only sent that to organizers. That that an organizer just only gets to me. <laughs> so okay, all right. So are we just going to leave this sit, kick the can down the road a little bit more? I mean, can we just slap that we're putting a stipend, like $100 a month for the work plus mileage, documented mileage or something like that, detailed mileage? Because I just, I think we might actually get somebody at this point in time, whereas before we might not have gotten anybody. But if we put some money on there, people, you know, even if it's just mm -hmm. a little bit of money, that's going to pay groceries for somebody. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. All right. Um, I will update the uh, the both the website posting with the stipend information, uh, as well as reach back out to this um, this woman who who did contact us, and her name is escaping me right now, uh, and let her know that that's that's an option as well. Okay. And uh, um, Ray posted. Um, he wants to change the job description to offer up to $250 a month plus um, expenses. So point, counterpoint, any thoughts one way or the other? I mean, so just, I mean, looking at the, um, I mean, looking at what we actually have in the bank account, 
you know, it's not always going to look like that. I mean, so we should be back um, reasonably stable once we get, you know, once we get the, the project paid off and start getting things rolling. But it is a bit uh, um, scarce right now. Can, I mean, can, it's, it's, can we're, 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 yeah. Can you, can you hear me okay? So uh, I can I, hear you. Um, Go ahead. Take a look at the job. Can, can you just identify yourself since you're not on camera? Yeah, this is Ray. Northfield. Um, take a look at the job say, description. Yeah. Determine the services this, that you want. And um, uh, so trim that down, make that the job description, offer up to 250 bucks plus expenses and move on. You've decided you don't want as much as uh, this. Well, trim it down to what you need. And then, um, it, and I'm figuring 250 is probably about half of what we had before in terms of level of work and the money and so i'm fine with the idea of here you trim it to 250 go negotiate something come back with somebody and we're good to go okay other other thoughts about that john john russell is saying in the chat that 250 is a better number just kind of curious i mean how many hours a month do we expect this to take Well, okay. you know, hope, hopefully this person is like 20 hours a month, something like that, with all that she was, she doing, was doing. But I, Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, well, she was doing both both clerk and treasurer. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I don't I don't know, but I mean, that's fine. I mean, you know, don't we need an what we really need is an organizer, right? Um, this John so, so right, but this is I, 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 I honestly don't I, I don't really want to. I mean, I'll put it on the agenda for next time if you really want to. But I don't really want to get in this discussion again about uh, hiring somebody. I think we just need to have our have our clerk appointed and then move on from there. Um, you know, whether that's um, a hundred or two hundred and fifty, I guess that's what I'm looking for. Um, and so as I, yeah, as I understand it, go ahead. Do we need to make a motion? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I like, I guess, I, yeah, I would, but I would like to have a bit of, I would like to have well, some discussion. Everything. I mean, so I, I would make a motion that we keep everything the way it was, except say $250 plus expenses per month. Okay, so let me see if I can re restate that you broke up at the end there, John. So I think John's motion was to keep the job description the same as it is, but to advertise for two hundred and fifty dollars a month plus expenses. Yes. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. Second. Okay. Seconded first by Chuck. Bravo. Okay. <laughs> His connection he, speed's faster. <laughs> yeah, probably. I highly doubt that. I'm, I'm, I just do this a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, any further discussion? Does that seem reasonable to everybody? Can, can we hear, can you hear me? Um, more or less. Michael, Michael, can you hear me? Yeah, more or less. More or less. Sorry, it's not good enough. Um, if, 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 if we're looking for a clerk and a treasurer and we were in the past spending 500 a month, were we? Is that right? Um, we weren't spending any a month. We talked about it. Oh, we talked about it. Um, it I, I think we should figure out what we need to pay for both of those and divide it in half for each position and offer and, and ask if anyone wants to do both together. That's fine. But um, the idea that we're paying $12.50 to $15 an hour sounds like we're it's a virtually a salaried position and and if we're thinking of it as a stipend i think it's a little high if if we if we can i just think we need to decide are are we offering to pay someone roughly by the hour or are we offering a stipend to encourage them to volunteer and cover you know get help them get some groceries and pay their expenses um I can go either way, but I think we should be clear about what we're doing. Because in what I heard you say at first, Jeremy, is we were talking about a stipend, and 
to encourage the volunteerism. So with 250 per clerk and 250 per treasurer per month seems higher than what you were describing. But I'm yeah, okay that with it. Budget. Okay, that's that's my comment. I mean, one thought is if we get someone good, then we don't need to keep going through this and we get the job done. And that's important because I've been looking at the list of things that we need to do that David's been putting together and it's pretty impressive. Um, I know I don't have a whole lot of extra time to devote to it. So <clears throat> my thought would be to just get someone good and pay them maybe more than we need to a little bit, but just pay someone to get it done. So that's sort of my two cents anyway. Okay, so I just did some math. So I, what I did is I divided 5,000, which is what we have in the budget, by two, or no, no, that's not what I did first. I can do this. Yes. 5,000 <laughs> divided by 12 is 4, it's, six, it's 17. Yeah, yeah that, so it's 200 a month for each position. But I think the treasurer job does a little bit more than the clerk. So I was thinking 150 for the clerk and am I doing this right? Wait, minus 150. We do need to leave yeah, wiggle room for reimbursement. Yeah, so say 150 for the clerk and 250 for, or 225 for the treasurer as stipends. I like calling it a stipend. Um, um, that's, just, that's just calling it out, if, if we do uh, 150 for the clerk and 200 for the treasurer, that leaves us $800 of wiggle room for reimbursed expenses <laughs> over the course of the year. So 150 and 200, that's what you're... Sounds good to me. Yeah. Do we have okay. a we we have motion to amend the motion uh, to put amounts uh, of 150 for the clerk and 200 for the treasurer, plus uh, within reason reimbursed expenses for travel and so forth. Um, and uh, if somebody takes both positions, they are eligible to receive both stipends. Seconded. Okay, who is that second? David. Okay, seconded by David Healy. All right, any further discussion about the, the motion to amend? And uh, I want to answer a question that came up uh, earlier that this that this may um, this may, may be relevant. Um, Andy asked if the clerk can be on the board. The clerk can be on the board. The treasurer cannot. So if any of you decided you wanted that uh, that big juicy two hundred dollars a month, then uh, I'd have to ask you to step down. Just saying. Alrighty. Any further discussion on? The motion okay so we're going to do this in town order if your town is here then um pipe up otherwise if it's not um all right well whatever if, if you're not here i'm not going to hear you um so oh. yay or nay from barry city barry town yay okay uh berlin yay cabot Callis? Sorry to interject. Are you are you jotting this down? I am. Yep. Okay. Cool. Callis was a guess. Okay. Uh, East Montpelier. Yay. Okay. Elmore. Marshfield. Marshfield votes yes. Okay. Middlesex. Yes. Montpelier. Yes. Moortown? Yes. Northfield? Yes. Orange? Aye. Plainfield? Yes. Roxbury? Williamstown? Yes. Woodbury? Worcester? Yay. Okay. So um, I'm going to do that, if that helps. Um, 
And I think what I'm going to do next time, because I think we had um, we had consensus on that, is that we'll just um, I'll, I'm going to ask if there's consensus, and if if someone says no, we will simply um, I'll go ahead and take the roll call. I don't really want to have to do that another eight times. <laughs> Frankly, it was it was a good idea, but uh, yeah, here we go. Um, okay, so the motion as amended is to um, set the um, the stipend for the clerk to uh, $150 a month and the treasurer to $200 a month plus reasonable expenses with the job descriptions as previously posted. Does that sound correct to everybody? Yes. Okay, great. Any further discussion on the motion as amended? Okay. So I'm going to assume a consensus unless I hear someone say that they would like a roll call. Okay. Let it be known that I did not hear any um, any dissension. So we will um, we will say that that motion has passed. Okay. Anything else else on? Um, the clerk's appointment. Do any of you want to do this temporarily or should we just sit on this for a bit? So what exactly does it entail? So if you pop over into the chat, actually, um, here, I'm going to, I'm going to repaste what Ray, what Ray pasted in that only I saw. So I'm going to put this oh, over is there. That, uh, okay. I, I saw it. Um, okay. Yeah, I right. post that to everybody now. So yeah, it's really a statutory responsibilities. Think of what your town clerk does, and th and this would be the district clerk. So it'd have similar responsibilities as a district clerk. Um, I'm sorry, similar responsibilities as a town clerk. Um, but right now there's really not that much to do. What we've asked the clerk to do in the past is essentially do some of the administrative um, office type work and to act and to actually produce the minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what's what's required at the moment. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to give you a uncomfortable pause of about 10 seconds and if anybody's volunteering, you let me know otherwise we're going to move on. I'll take it. All right. So that At sounds least like temporarily. If, if someone else comes, if if we find someone that really wants it, I don't have a ton of free time, but um, I can take it for now. Okay. So um, I would uh, respectfully request once we appoint you to uh, document any uh, mileage. Not that you're driving a lot right away, <laughs> but uh, my brakes were frozen to the <laughs> to yeah. the rotors when I tried to drive oh, last. <laughs> Nice. So, um, and uh, for the monthly stipend, you can just send me something that looks invoice-ish, okay. and then I can, I can, I'll send you a check. All right. So I heard that as a motion from Jeremy Matt to appoint himself as the <laughs> clerk for CP Fiber, and I will second that. I don't know if I can do uh, that though, because Michael's on the line. Oh, that's true. So I'll okay. I'll move that. How about that? Okay, I was going to do it, but that's fine. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so I will take Michael's uh, race to the motion as a second, unless there are objections. <laughs> so moved by me, seconded by uh, Michael Birnbaum. Any further discussion? Okay, I'm going to assume consensus unless I hear someone asking for a roll call. And the motion passes. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Appreciate your, your time with all the other stuff you have going on too. Thanks, Jeremy. So are oh, we going God. to all right. are we going to um, advertise these positions or are we just going to sit on it the way we've been sitting on it? It's John. Jeremy, do you want us to still advertise the clerk position? Um, why don't I see how it goes? And then okay. if it gets to be really onerous, then probably then maybe yes. But for now, why don't we see how it goes? Okay. And to call out, we will still need to advertise the treasurer position unless Jeremy is willing to step down from the governing board. Do we have a text for that to put up on front porch forum yet? Or did that just uh, happened today? 
that that happened today. We we had an we had an advertisement that went out that we sent out a bunch of emails about. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sure somebody could dig that up in short order, and we can get that back out there again. Yeah, because I can put it on the Williams Town Front Porch Forum. Okay. If if whoever uh, might have a copy of that last post could forward it to me, I'd be happy to get that up on the website, um, polish it up if it needs it, and distribute it back out to board members for reposting on Front Porch Forum. All right. Yeah, working on that. Appreciate it, Chuck. All right. Okay, anything else on um, appointment of the clerk or treasurer? Okay, so let's move on to, um, I wanna talk about uh, Duxbury, if we could. Um, I was contacted by someone um, someone in Duxbury and then actually a second person that that person brought in. Um, and they are interested in uh, talking about joining. And I was kind of straightforward and blunt with them about what that means and why they're sort of, <laughs> they're kind of late. Um, but I have a meeting with the, um, with the, the interested resident and the um, Duxbury Select Board on Monday, May 11th. And uh, I told them that we were in the middle of the Broadband Innovation Grant, one of the, like the, one of their planning, uh, Planning Commission people asked, like, well, what about this grant? Could we get that? And I said, well, we we already have it, um, and Duxbury is not really part of our process right now. Um, and then they asked, you know, could Duxbury apply on their own? And I said, there's nothing preventing them from doing so. Um, but in any event, I am going to be talking to their select board. If there's something that you think I should take to them, or if um, David, as a, oops, there went my camera, David, if there's something that um, Fred tells us that um, there's a value to um, that's not going to work. If there's a value to uh, adding Duxbury to our map, if that's somehow valuable, dumb chords. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Now I'm not going to fly all over the place. Chuck, look at chat. Yeah. So. Okay, looking at the chat. Okay, so um, thank you, Siobhan. Siobhan just posted. All right. Um, and just and for the for the sake of uh, transparency, open meetings or whatever, um, would folks um, when you're when you're chatting, would you please um, actually send it to? I'm going to repost this to the entire audience. Because any sort of stored communications like that need to be made public? Because we do have. Um, we have Orca here, and we also so Jeremy, have, uh, we, we can't do that um, as panelists. We can only post to organizers or panelists oh. or both. So uh, okay, we we may need to amend the process to say we can't use chat if uh, if if need be. Um, however, if if the organizer uh, if the video you record will include it, then we might be covered. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure that it does, but so so if it's short, you know, if people are like posting questions, I will just vocalize them. And if they're not, I will uh copy and paste um copy and paste them out so that everybody can see it. I'm I'm hoping that it gets captured in the in the Orca um in the Orca version, if not the version that uh um go to webinar is collecting right now as well. One thought um okay. is maybe screenshotting you know, just before before we close the before we close the window, just take a screenshot of the of the uh, chat window as backup. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually, and now that I think about it, it, actually doesn't show up on the video, but I do get like a chat log, a text file. So I can just grab that whole text file and just just put it out along with our minutes. I think that would probably be the the cleanest way to do that. Sounds good. Okay, anything else on um, Duxbury? We'll circle back around uh, our next meeting. I mean, I will, I will have had the meeting with, um, I will have had the meeting with them by the time of our next meeting. So 
we'll yep. just, just a little bit of information on current access in Duxbury. Uh, Duxbury is largely consolidated communications. Um, however, there is one road across from the high school that consolidated communications had a major breakage or something, and they actually wired that whole road with fiber. So there's like one road in Duxbury that has fiber from consolidated, which I didn't even know was a possibility. Uh, but most of the other people there, I believe, are on consolidated standard DSL offering. Uh, okay. I also think that uh, Duxbury has some Comcast um, going up the, the road, the Camel's Hump Road. So I think there's. Uh, I think that's all. Oh, wait. Thanks, Michael. Uh, okay, let's move on to a business development committee and consultant update. That's you, David. And Jerry is going to do the consultant update. Hi, right, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, I can do that now. Um, yeah. I think we're that. having we're having pretty good success with the uh, consultant interrail. We've been meeting with them on a biweekly basis now, uh, very regularly. We're expecting a first draft from them this week oh. um, and the uh, that's going to come to the business development committee we're going to take a look at that and then what we're what we anticipate doing is having an interim board meeting where interrail can present to the board uh, we don't want to wait another month, being that we're going to get a draft this week and anticipate that within approximately two weeks, Interisle can present to the board. So we're going to want to ask for a board meeting so that Interisle can make their presentation without uh, having to delay the schedule. What we've seen from them so far, um, if, I can, if I can speak for myself perhaps, uh, David, let me know if I'm off mark here is pretty promising we're 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 looking at multiple alternatives for a phase one deployment uh which is something that we we were very interested in we didn't want them to immediately focus on one area uh, so we have multiple areas uh the construction costs appear to be coming in at under two million dollars um and the, uh, the number of households I think I have here, um, something along the lines of 800 potential customers at a, at a $2 million cost. Those will be refined when we see their deliverable, of course. Um, but what we're seeing looks pretty doable. Um, and Personally, I, I, I like the way they've, they've approached it. They've been very open to our comments. They're very open to looking at flexible technologies and, and not a lot of, uh, mostly fiber. I mean, that's what we're all interested in. So it's not that there's a lot of wireless, but they've been looking at multiple approaches to implementing fiber. Uh, so I'm, I'm personally pleased with what they're doing so far, but I very much I'm looking forward to seeing their report, which we anticipate in, as a draft uh, sometime this week. And I'll, I'll leave that now to the team. This is David. I think Jerry covered it pretty well. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with their progress as well and happy with what they're doing. Um, in terms of other business development committee activity from the last meeting, I think I'll save it for the uh, NBRC grant stimulus funding and I'll do a um, uh, item on the agenda because it's related to that, which uh, our discussion was related to finding an ISP or somebody to team with on one of the grants. So I'll wait till we get to that item to describe what action I'd like to propose to the board. I don't know if this is a good time to bring this up, but I'm kind of tossing it out there because it's, I think it's pertinent. During our regular every week ADS check-in call, which is very exciting and a lot of fun, and I love being part of ADS, which is the Agency of Digital Services, for those of you who don't know. Um, they, uh, the John Quinn, 
and uh, Sean Naylor, the uh, deputy secretary, talked about that at the state level, they're talking about trying to get broadband out to the underserved communities and what the state can do to help with that at that level. So this whole pandemic thing has really, they're mostly concerned about schooling the children and how many kids in our area do not have good access. So they're talking about it. And, uh, and I don't know what form that's going to take, but there are discussions going on, and I don't know where exactly. I think it might be at the cabinet level, um, but I'm not entirely sure, and I didn't think it was good for me to ask because John knows who I am. So um, oh. anyway, I just wanted to toss that out there that there may be another pool out there at some point that's more local to us that we might be able to grab on to. Anyway, I'm done. I'll let uh, Michael Baerbaum give us the update on the WEC meeting we had yesterday where we learned more, a little bit more about that, Siobhan. Um, so be before I talk about the WEC meeting, I'll speak directly to what Siobhan's talking about. Um, uh, that is definitely a reality. There is uh, movement from the administration to um, devote some of the huge amount of funds they got from the federal stimulus bills. Um, they haven't promised anything, and the way they're organizing it right now is twofold. One, uh, the Commissioner of Public Service, June Tierney, has sent out an appeal to all electric utilities and all um, telecommunications companies and a couple of ISPs, they're not all on the list, um, to do everything they can to get internet out as fast as they can, to finish projects they had started, to accelerate them, to start new projects, and to particularly focus on school children. And they offer zero dollars, but instead they say, keep track of your expenses, and we will do our best to find a way to reimburse you to the extent that we can from FEMA and other funds we get from the feds. So that is a laudable goal and an awkward way to appeal to businesses. And so um, some of the businesses are responding. And in fact, um, I'm responding in cooperation with another WISP. Um, on a project in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, and, and I'm sure others, um, uh, BTEL has responded and made a, an unusual offer, kind of an odd offer. Um, and, and then, um, let's see, Microsoft through RTO Wireless and a Vermont um, consult um, contractor, I guess, are also um, contributing hotspots throughout the state for um, the purposes of getting to students and their staff and their parents. So there's a whole bunch of little initiatives going on. Some of them are um, donations, some of them are speculative, and some of them are coerced. And I think give it another several weeks, and I think things will get a little more structure, a little more um, appropriate um, Uh, funding sources and that sort of thing. So, to be seen. so now we can segue over to the WEC meeting. Um, uh, and before we get fully into the WEC meeting, um, I was talking with Barry Bernstein, the president of the board, who was suddenly excited by this possibility of that, this federal money coming through the administration. And he is approaching, I won't name names, but he's approaching a number of very high government officials in the administration to see if some CD fiber projects that Interisle is presented to the WEC board yesterday um, might be funded directly rather than going through this process of, of going to deal and asking to borrow money and build it to see if they could be directly funded fully. Now, whether that can happen is 
unknown, but it's an exciting possibility. Um, it could, we could still go for Vita money and still get that kind of money and, and build, you know, $8 million worth of stuff early, which could be really cool. So anyhow, um, more to come. Um, he's, he's, he's floated the idea with certain big officials and they haven't said yes or no. Um, but we can sort of join in with him and say, yeah, we're, we'll, we're going to be shovel ready. We're willing to do this. So that's possible. So now the context of the WEC meeting. Um, the Business Development Committee and Greg and I, who are the liaisons with, with WEC um, and Interrail together, wanted to get a little more clarity from WEC as to what they might be able to do for us. And we wanted to tell them what we thought we might be able to do for them. And so we um, organized a, a more formal meeting than we've had in the past. Um, we had an agenda, we sent a, a letter out that, that laid out kind of the case for, for the mutual assistance. And then we had um, a fruitful, pretty long meeting yesterday um, with um, the highlight, I think probably was um, Fred from Interisle showing maps and getting them excited about what could happen using WEC polls. Um, and the, the, the uh, not unexpected disappointment was that um, WEC said, you know, we really want this to happen. We really support you, but we can't commit to spending a ton of money or, or, or being your bidder in an FCC auction or doing a bunch of things that involve hanging us out to dry on a couple million dollars or more. And so they're not ready until we can convince them better of how um, good the business cases would be. So there is still the, the very real possibility that WEC will cooperate with us, but they're not in a hurry to sign on the dotted line without knowing that they're not taking risks. And unfortunately, we're under a tighter timeline than they are. And so we may have to if, for example, if we want to bid in the RDOF reverse auction, we may have to find another bidding partner because they may not be ready to do it. Um, if we decide not to bid, then it doesn't matter. They, they want to help, but they're not ready to risk um, co-op members' money until they know that it's a solid chance to get it back. Um, David, did you just raise your hand? Did you want to say something? You're still on mute, David. You're muted. Uh, they basically also said they were really wanted to finish their feasibility study, which they just got the money from the Public Service Department. I believe they were putting out their RFP for that study today. So they're about three to four months, you know, in limbo here till they get that kind of information. So they weren't ruling at all out, but they were being very cautious. Let's put it that way. We also set up, um, there's going to be a meeting between uh, Dan Grossman from Interisle and Dan Weston from WEC to work out a bunch of technical liaison details. Um, so, so it was definitely a very positive meeting and, um, and the disappointing part was not unexpected. So, you know, we were just hoping to push them along. Oh, one other thing, this is really significant. It's the first well, or I'm going to just say it's the first meeting that the general manager of WEC said, we really want this to happen. And I, and I think that was a significant change. Um, so I guess that's enough. I think, to, is there anything else important to mention, David? Yeah, I, I, I didn't read your the, the fact we left out um, Velco. Velco participated oh, pretty fully in this meeting. And I don't, did, Michael, did you invite them or did WEC invite them? I did. I, I asked for permission from WEC and WEC said, by all means, 
Um, and so, so um, two, two vice presidents from Belco, Carrick Johnson and Dan Nelson attended. And um, Dan was his normal quiet self and Carrick was his normal dominant self. So it, <laughs> they, had, they had a lot of input towards the end of the meeting. Um, a lot of it talking about the money the governor's got, to, the discretionary money the governor may have to play with, and talking about working with congressional delegations to get more money and big picture stuff like that. Um, was completely on board with allowing us to use their plan to connect our different areas. Um, I forgot to say that Washington Electric has definitely said that we are. Um, we have carte blanche to set up um, cabinets and nodes at their substations just outside the fence line. So that was a really good thing to hear too. And if I could just uh, pop in real quick and uh, uh, mention a couple of things Ray said in the chat and uh, he said, uh, does April uh 28th work for an interim board meeting i assume i expect that is like meeting with interrail and then also a question where for the 800 clients and i expect that that was about the uh hypothetical um possible build out location if i, I don't know if that's oh. what you're talking about ray i, I, I can answer that and i can answer that question so no no particular area has been selected, Ray, or anybody else. But for the purposes of figuring out the feasibility, they picked one area to look at just to see what it would cost to do that area, even though they have five areas that they're looking at. And um, so that 800, 800 um, locations is probably applies to all five of them. But they only, they've only they're only costing out one of them for the, for the purposes of showing feasibility. And Ray's asking how many miles for the two million. Uh, David, do you know? Give me a second. I'll look that up. This is Jerry. I believe hey. I have that information. Jerry, this is, Jerry, this is David. Um, they, the map they showed yesterday was different than the one they showed us. Um, the two weeks before, the week before, they extended okay. it. So, yeah, I don't know. How, I forgot how, how, if you know how many miles they had on your. Yes, from I have it. I have it here. They looked at. They looked at. 800 potential customers on 65 miles of fiber. Yeah, and the, construct, so. the construction cost for that was was well over a million. Of course it was. Yeah. I think yesterday they said 1.7. Yep. yep, yep. Yeah, everything pretty much came between somewhere around 1.6 and 1.8 when they looked at the uh I have information on four different areas. But now this this the information I'm presenting right now is 2 weeks old and we're going to get an update when we when we get a document this week. So, but that's ballpark. So you can get a sense of where we're at. So the other thing I want to point out is that the the legislature is also keenly interested. So not only the executive branch, but um, both House and House and Senate committees are both, um, you know, eagerly talking about this and trying to figure out how they can support um, these efforts to get, you know, internet out fairly quickly, if, if when possible, at the uh, at the state level. What one of the so we talked about a lot of stuff in. Uh, House Energy and Tech, one of the things that I asked for specifically that I thought would be within reach of a, a smaller financial amount, I said, you know, of course, you know, f fund us, you know, you know, give us some money and we'll, and we'll build these things. That's, that will definitely happen. But I said, you know, probably even more so for the, for the new CUDs that just came online. Um, I said, we need some kind of admin help. So we need help with, um, bookkeeping and we need help doing um, kind of the clerk and the treasurer sort of stuff. And uh, they didn't run screaming from that. So I'm 
I, I'm I'm thinking that that's going to be a a possible thing that we that we may see. Or if if you have a a favorite state rep or a state senator and they're asking you about broadband, that might be a Vermont sized ask. Didn't you also mention grant writing? As a yes, yes. Thank, thank you. Yeah, that that was among the the admin stuff was also help specific help. You know, writing these grants. You know, these grants are out there, but they're increasingly difficult to apply for, and then also difficult to just just to manage, just to do the do the reporting and keep on top of all that. Because if one of us volunteers drops the ball, you know, if I drop the ball and reporting to USDA, then you know, our USDA funding is in is in jeopardy then, which is a bad situation. So can I make another comment? Um, of course. So for the last 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 few board meetings, we've, we've come up with and skirted around the discussion of, of the need for an executive director at some point. Um, that could dovetail into the ask of the legislature. It could um, fund any CUD that requests, you know, if they could fund, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year for a CUD to hire someone to do this work, that might might be doable. Or they may want to hire just one or two to do the whole state. I don't know. But anyhow, I just, when you were testifying, that's what I was thinking. Could that turn into a position? Yeah, and and in the chat, Ray is agreeing too. He's saying all CUD should have an executive director to project manage this and to support the board. And he's saying <clears throat> that this would be a lot like town managers, town town administrators in towns. So we would be the equivalent of the select board, the elected slash appointed officials steering the ship, and they would be the actual one doing the the day to day. David, this is David. I I don't I know Andy's on the phone, and I and I don't know if Andy wasn't listening to the. House committee meeting on Friday, but I think your memo did a lot of good. Yeah, thank you. I uh, it was a bit of a rant, but it was yeah. it was meant to be. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no. and I that was a, the hearing's great. If people haven't watched it, and Ray, thanks for sending off the the link to the YouTube. It's it's very very good. So, Senate Finance had a committee meeting today in which. It wasn't on the topic, but the last 20 minutes of the YouTube video are all about broadband and net hmm. mostly about net neutrality. Okay. Anything else? Uh, business Development Committee, David or Jerry? I'm going to wait till we get to the application piece. Okay. Talk about my needs. All right. Uh, moving on, Communications Committee update, Chuck. Yeah, so uh, since we last met, uh, we have drafted and posted a great set of FAQs to the website. Um, I would encourage people to uh, go go take a look. And uh, we also have a printable version that you can distribute if you feel the need to, uh, to, to hand people paper copies, although hopefully there's not a whole lot of that going on right now. Um, and uh, I, want, I just want to say thank you to both David and Michael, who put in a huge amount of work in bringing those FAQs together. Uh, it, was a, it was a monumental effort. We had many versions and edits flying back and forth, and, and uh, I think where we ended up is, is, is pretty good. <clears throat> um, the next item is uh, the surveys. So the survey results, we now have seven out of 18 towns with their results posted to the website. Uh, so consider this a call to the other 11 towns. And I, I hate to admit that Moortown is, is one of those towns. Uh, uh, consider this a call to all the other towns to uh, finish those reports with David uh, so that we can get them up on the website. We do have some language drafted uh, and ready to go for people who want to share that out with their communities. Um, and so if you're looking for that language, uh, uh, see uh, myself or Ray, uh, we can get, get you that language so that you can share it out. Um, it is worth noting that, you know, this is, a, this is a pretty good touch point to bring awareness back out into the communities and, and make sure they're thinking about us and remember who we are um, and uh, closing the loop on, on the fact that they filled out those surveys. 
Um, and the survey results are, are really, really interesting. So the, the article uh, is on the website. You can go to the news section. It is presently the most recent post in the news section. Um, and it has the summary data for all the towns as well as uh, all of the towns who have completed their individual reports. It has those linked out as well at this point. Yes, David. Uh, you also have a set so that if you want to get on the email list and you've been getting some takes, takers on that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand your question. People can be, can sign up on the website to get notified of uh, things that we're doing. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so, um, on on, <laughs> yeah. So on the website, uh, we added, well, um, a couple a couple of places where people email address to get uh, the first place that is we add a new how to contribute page um, which does have some placeholder information at this point in time the fact that you know we're considering loans and, and those are going to be coming uh jeremy um we need to connect on still the, the legal structure of those loans and, and what progress you've made uh, but before i get to that uh we also added a uh, the ability that when somebody like mouses out of the website, it pops a, a dialogue asking them to sign up a pretty classic traditional, uh, what's called exit interstitial um, marketing tactic. And in that, it allows people to indicate whether they are more interested in receiving service or are also interested in potentially receiving loans. Um, it is worth noting that that's been live for a about a couple weeks uh, of time at this point in time. Um, and uh, we've gotten a pretty good response rate on that. I'm just pulling up the, the number right now because I haven't looked at it in a couple of days. Sorry, um, real quick, you said receiving loans? Well, uh, participating in loans. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yes, yes, my mistake. Th thank you for that clarification. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've received uh, 23 signups on that uh, email list to date over the course of the last couple of weeks. So that, you know, there's definitely some interest out there uh, and people are going to the website to look for more information. And, and I think a number of those were probably driven from um, Ray's post in Northfield about the survey results, but uh, there are some other people just signing up there as well. Um, so that's that's an update on that piece of it. Uh, Jeremy, do you, uh, good segue there. Do you, uh, do you have an update on the loan information side of things? It's our, it's our next agenda item, actually. That's uh, Phil's. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yep, that's right. Great. Uh, okay, so then the uh, the next item I wanted to call out uh, is there is an email list you probably all saw that I added you to uh, for convenience purposes, should help make managing the list of when you want to address the whole board simpler. Uh, Jeremy, we can make a comparable list for the interested parties, if you would like, if that would make your life easier as well. Uh, and it does give people the ability to you know, opt out on their own if, if they so choose and, and want to do so. Um, the one thing I just wanna call out is the email list does include everybody. So we just have to be very careful about replying all uh, uh, to that email list. And so you know, if you have something you wanna discuss about something that someone sends out, make sure to reply to just them and not to the, to the entire list, please. Uh, okay, uh, next item um, from communications. Um, we discussed in the last committee meeting that uh, for a number of us, staying on top of the volumes of emails for CV Fiber was getting challenging in our personal email accounts. Um, and so we wanted to propose to the board a convention that board members can use for creating their own Gmail email addresses specifically for CV Fiber materials. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that having a separate email address for some people may mean it never gets checked. Uh, I, for one, am constantly in about six different Gmail accounts anyway, so adding one more is not a big deal in my life, and it keeps things nice and clean and makes sure I've, I've got good separation there. But the convention we proposed and adopted in the communications committee, if you want to create uh, your own Gmail account for CV Fiber purposes, and by the way, this, this uh, is really valuable, so I wanna encourage people to do it. Uh, and the reason is if we ever get into a point where discovery is required because some sort of legal 
uh, issue comes up, having all of your communications about CV Fiber in a separate account is a very valuable thing in terms of separating uh, your CV Fiber life and, and all your personal emails that you know people might have to dig through at that point in time. Um, and so the, uh, the convention we came up with, I will read it to you, but I will also share it in the chat for reference. Uh, people who are primary delegates would be cvfiber.town. So for example, I'm cvfiber.moretown at gmail.com, where alternates would be cvfiber.town.alt. Uh, so, for example, the alternate in Moortown uh, would become cbfiber.moortown.alt. Um, one other benefit, just to call it out, is that it also means if you transition out of the role as a delegate, you can pass the account credentials on to whoever comes into the role, and it does provide a little bit of continuity uh, on that purpose. So, I already created a Gmail account under my name for this purpose that didn't exist before. I use it strictly for CV Fiber. It's Siobhan Paracone at gmail.com. Should I make a new one to conform with this standard or can I continue to use the one I've got and then when somebody replaces me, they get that account? I, I just that, don't want to That's comply, a good question. Um, on the committee, we, we did not we did not state that we wanted to make this a mandate. We just thought it was a good idea. Um, also, uh, uh, Jeremy, I don't know why it added an HTTP colon slash slash <laughs> after the at sign on the first one of those conventions. Uh, I don't know if we can fix that or if that's something that uh, GoToMeeting is, is screwing up. Um, but I can, I can share it around with the group after the meeting as well. Um, but uh, you know, I, I would like to point out that there are benefits to conforming to the standard, which is if you want to contact a town delegate, you you can guess what their email is really easily. Um, and so, you know, that that is a good benefit of, of standardizing. But uh, I personally am of the uh, opinion that I didn't want to mandate it. Um, and, and at the board, we did not, uh, sorry, at the committee, we did not discuss mandating it. So unless we hear a, a motion to mandate it, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make so, a new one. So there, there, there have also been um, a couple of email accounts that were created. Um, I don't know if they still exist. I never actually logged into them. There were several accounts like at cvfiber.net so um, I don't know if we want to go and, and set those up. I mean, if there's a cost, uh, you know, hosting it with Google is probably not that big of a deal. And and I don't know if we qualify for free stuff or if they do that we anymore. Don't. They used to. I, I've looked into that. Um, they only support uh, 5013C style nonprofits. They do not support other legal entities. Um, and so we, we don't count. Uh, and they also specifically do not cover government entities, which is closer or is what we are essentially. So um, we do not qualify for that. I actually chatted with their sales reps at length about it as well. Um, what we would qual we can qualify for their cheapest tier of service, which if I recall correctly is $10 per user per month. So with a board this size adds up pretty darn quickly. Um, so the other option is we could go out and look at cheaper email hosting providers. There are other options out there that, that are more cost effective at our current size. You don't get nearly as many of the bells and whistles that you get with uh, the Google suite of services, um, um, such as document collaboration and, and all that sort of stuff, because I'm using it for the document collaboration on the communications committee as well. Um, and there is some value in that. I wonder if if one of the member towns would be willing to um, to host us to host another domain with their current infrastructure. Um, so I'm thinking like one of the bigger bigger places, so Montpelier, um, Barry City. Um, not being terribly familiar with with their setup, that might be an option. Ber Berlin is not really um, the way that setup is not really suitable to add many more email addresses, I think we've got six there, and it's it's scaled exactly for wh what it's doing right now. Um, so, so this is Ken, I, I will send a note to Bill Frazier asking if that's a possibility. For that would be Hill. awesome, thank you. Yeah. This, this, is, this is John, aren't, aren't we gonna have our own um, IP address, CV 
fiber um, as soon as we John that's 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 exactly what we're talking and, about we're talking about so, the costs associated uh, with having our own at CV fiber um, the the Google hosting for email addresses is ten dollars per user per month so that's, with the size that's, of our board that's not what I'm asking people. that's not what I'm asking I'm saying that once we start uh, signing people up we're going to have CV fiber uh, or something along that line, right? And then well, so we don't have the infrastructure yet. I know, but we will. So do we want to Maybe. tie ourselves so. down? No, we we will. What we 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 will? I'm just saying no. Why why not? Not why no? So so we we don't necessarily want to or need to host our own web or email infrastructure. More and more, even ISPs are off. Um, essentially contracting that stuff out. So in order to run our own website or, or um, mail server, you're going to have to have somebody administering that. And that's uh, another person we might not have. I mean, I've done that in the past. I can do that. But unless, you know, unless CV Fiber is going to pay me to do that, that's not something I'm really interested in doing at my advanced stage. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the calls in the middle of the night to bring things back online because they've gone down are not much fun. Nope. I'm unwilling. I'm, I'm, I'm unwilling to use Gmail at, at all or FaceTime or any of those other uh, invasive so, uh, structures. So, so Proton Mail, Proton Mail offers you know this the same sort of structure, and we could probably I could we could probably look at look at that as an option too. There are less um, less awful hosts out there that aren't Microsoft that aren't Google. So uh, I, I I think we have. I, I think we're probably on the same page with this. I would prefer not to deal with Gmail or whatever, but yeah, that's that's something that let's we don't need to worry about um, over over committing to Montpelier. They're going to host us there, and then we migrate out if we need to at a later point. I I I, I don't really think that's going to uh, slow us down at all. Let's see. Sorry. All right. Anything else on communications committee, Chuck? Uh, sorry, just bringing up my notes. Uh, that that is it. Um, so just as as a follow up, I will send around that convention for anyone who does want to adopt it. Again, we're using it for a lot of document collaboration as well. Um, so there there is you know some some value in doing it. John, totally hear your concerns, and so you know if you want to keep it on your current hosting provider and and managing it that way, that that seems reasonable. Okay. I'm currently paying on Sobernet. I'm paying three dollars a month for their uh, email service. So. so maybe we could host it there too. I mean, I'm I'm sure they would be willing to host another domain. But um, let's move on to Phil. Update on promissory note high risk investment offering. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just grab my notes here. Um, I had a, uh, a good conversation with Paul Giuliani, um, and I, I'm sure as you know, Jeremy, Paul did um, the legal work for uh, EC Fiber and continues to um, do legal work for them. Um, he, you know, he really felt strongly that because of the work that was done, there's a really good solid foundation of stuff that we can draw on that we won't necessarily have to pay for uh, because they did and uh, it's there and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, the, the document that you had sent me was somewhat different than um, where we're headed right now. That was, um, that was for a bond issue, first of all. So it, needed to be quite a bit more complex than what we'll need for a promissory note. But the other thing that he pointed out to me is that at, at the time that was done, um, CEDs did not exist. So they had to create other kinds of entities to be able to uh, get some legal standing to be able to uh, uh, go out and go after, um, after bonds. So, and of course he, he deals with all the bond bank stuff, so he's kind of the guy as far as knowing where um, where this is going. So um, he said it's um, it's essential to have the feasibility study. 
and I, I told him where we were in that process. And he said, assuming, assuming the feasibility study gives us a path forward, uh, the next thing that is going to be important, which we also will be hoping to do, is the business plan. And at that point, he felt it would be really, really important for us to hire a financial advisor. Um, and again, not not the kind that we might deal with on an individual basis for you know planning for retirement or college funds, but somebody who understands corporate kinds of structures, short-term high-risk borrowing, bond issues, those kinds of things. He said that that's going to be the person who essentially is going to structure uh, this first kind of offering. And Paul will you know will draw the the note itself. But he said it's he feels it's really important to have that financial advisor uh, dealing with uh, with the actual financial uh, issues. He said there's some there's some uh, language that we really are going to have to to make sure that we have. We, he called blue sky language, which basically very very clearly um, lays out the risk to the individual uh, investor. Uh, but also details what we've done, uh, some interpretation around the findings of the feasibility study, summarizing the um, uh, the business plan, which in his sense was kind of putting some icing on this that says, look, we know this is high risk, but this is what we've done. This is what these things tell us. We feel um, that there's a very high rate of success and, you know, uh, although there is no collateral other than, you know, what we might get done, uh, here are the things that we know. So, um, he, again, he suggested um, picking Stan, uh, Stan Williams spring as much as possible around these things. And uh, he, you know, he spoke very highly of all the work that he did there. So he said, for right now, he felt we really, um, there's really not much to do as far as moving forward on um, on the promissory notes until we see what the feasibility study uh, tells us and then what we think our timing is going to be as far as the business plan. But the, probably while the work is being done on the business plan, um, maybe at the interim report kind of stage would be the time uh, for us um, to start meeting uh, with a, a, an advisor, hopefully having picked somebody, you know, before that time and start structuring the promissory note. He said, there's some, you know, some decisions that we need to make, obviously, about uh, the amounts that we're going to sell uh, each of these notes in um, and the interest rate. Um, and, you know, do we, uh, do we give a higher uh, rate to somebody who might invest uh, a lot more money than the person who might want to invest five hundred or a thousand dollars, or you know what the um, the basement is kind of going to be on on that. Uh, I um, I felt pretty good after the conversation with Paul. Uh, I think you know he's got a really good grasp. Uh, of what we're trying to do. He was excited uh, about doing it. Uh, he felt very excited um, about having worked with, uh, with EC Fiber. We had a little discussion about our, you know, the current situation with COVID-19 and where, um, where things may go. And when, in fact, we talked about some of those things as far as funding, uh, trying to build on the need to get better networks for education. And that that might, in fact, um, you know, provide some other opportunities for funding. Um, and then we went off into the weeds a little bit in terms of philosophical discussions about how um, business may, in fact, be forever changed because of something like this. And again, though, what does that mean? Uh, how people are going to do business probably means they're going to need the connections. So I said, I think that we can, you know. Um, take some advantage of a bad situation and uh, and build on it. But uh, that's uh, that's where we stand with that. And, you know, when I see stuff come in next week from the, from Interisle, 
um, we can, you know, I can share that with Paul and we can, you know, start moving forward a little more. Questions? Comments? So, Phil, my uh, work schedule task spreadsheet, if you could put in a whole set of tasks on this task. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> Insert some rows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is this is something we've talked about previously, so I'll, I'll just answer this. He's uh, asking, won't two million dollars in Vita uh, two million dollar Vita loan require two hundred thousand dollars in matching funds? The answer is yes. And when might that be? Timeline. So we'd obviously want the loan before we start spending any money on construction, engineering, or whatever. So we're looking at, you know, this summer. Uh, I would recommend you just look at David's timeline, which I mean, uh, most of that is in there. But mm -hmm. yeah, so fun fundraising for that 10% match is part of what we're talking about. We're also looking at um, the next item, the NBRC grants as a possible venue for um, getting that matching funds for the, for the VITA money. So um, anything else on um, promissory notes, high risk investment offerings, Paul Giuliani's meeting with Phil. Okay, let's move on to the grant stimulus funding in RDOF. Um, David, do you want to pick up where you left off? I'll start. Um, so I've been uh, working, I did submit a letter of intent on the NRBC grant. Um, with Michael's advice, we we maxed out the number on the letter of intent, which we were going to see, which I think was a million dollars. But um, it's unlikely we'll be able to pull that one off, but we figured we'd just let them know how serious we were. Um, I learned today that the deadline is no longer May 15th, but it's June 1st. Um, there's a lot of paper. They, it's not as simple as last year. I mean, they've got paper paperwork up the wazoo to submit now. Um, uh, and so the, we haven't come up with a proposal of what we put in to do. I talked about, you know, using the money for the engineering for the rollout of the different service areas. But the committee has not said that's what we should do, or the board has not said what that's what we should do in our grant. And then I don't know where I heard this, whether it was yesterday uh, at the WEC meeting, whether the idea of putting all the CUDs together to put in a, a unified grant application to NRBC for it wasn't clear what purpose um, when I heard this. So I'm not sure if. Jeremy, were you at that meeting when that came up? I agree with that. I think, I think uh, Kara did it right now. Yeah, but I'm not exactly sure whether what he was talking about is even eligible for, uh, for the Northern Borderlands uh, grant. But in any event, so we're going to move ahead with that unless I hear otherwise from the board. Um, I'll be back with you with the proposal when we have you know, the paperwork and all the details done, but that was the update on the NRBC one. Uh, the second one, in terms of stimulus funding, you know, you read the paper as well as I do. I, I assume in the first go around the CARES money, I mean, the state of Vermont's getting $1.2 billion. Um, unclear what they're going to spend that on or what they can use it for. Uh, we know they're going to have to fill in some shortfalls in government whether it's state government or local government, but there may be more money in there that they may want to allocate to broadband purposes. We don't know yet. Um, Ken Jones may know a little more, but and Ken, if you want to say something, you can. I don't know if you do know. Yeah, the, the, the use of the 1.2 billion is to provide government services um, in this fiscal year that are in part related to COVID and in part underfunded because of COVID, in other words, lost revenues. Okay. Um, but, but so this overlaps with the possibility of providing service both for telehealth and um, long distance education, which are topics that COVID has sparked. And so a, a logical path is to use or, or for CV fiber to propose expansion to address the long to long range education long distance education and telehealth issues in our underserved areas and that so that would fit 
And there's also, there is also additional, I don't know if it's CARES, but it's one of the federal um, assistance acts for education specifically. Um, yeah. So the other thing was yesterday's meeting with WEC, um, Carrick Johnson from Delco is saying, you know, um, Congressman Welsh is on, uh, there's a um, bipartisan committee on broadband that Welsh is working on that we should keep in close contact with him in terms of making sure that our needs are taken care of in whatever they do. And then he was more than saying, since Middlesex is in our territory, to really pay attention to Pat Leahy on the Appropriations Committee. So somewhere on our list of things to do is to communicate with the two congressional offices to figure out whether we're on the list to you know, make sure they know what we need. Yeah, so there is a number being floated around for telecommunications infrastructure investment of 85 billion, which would translate to 170 million in Vermont. So it's, that's in the, the discussion about what the next assistance package would be from Congress. This is Jerry. I have a question. Do we have anybody with direct access to the staffers for Welsh, Leahy, or Sanders? Direct access that you can pick up the phone and call them? I have somebody in Leahy's office, but not at a low level. I do, Jerry. Who's, who's I do? Is that Michael? That's Michael, yeah. Well, this is this is I, I, this is critical. This kind of relationship could be more important than anything else we're doing. They've got to know we're out here. They've got to know we're about ready to spend money, and we we have to have this conversation. And we should coordinate it so that it's not all of us just calling as constituents. Uh, we 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 need to do this in an organized way, and we need to really press. We need to be our own lobbying. Uh, uh, constituency here because a lot of people are standing in line and a lot of people are making a lot of noise for this money and if we're silent and polite we're unheard sorry my New so, Yorker coming out but this well, is how it works I, I, I've been to Capitol I just quickly say I've been to Capitol Hill I think four times to visit their offices and speak with their um, communications staffers, as well as the um, representatives and senators. So I can share that contact with you or anyone else who should represent us, or I can try to represent us myself. Yeah, well, Michael, would, would you be willing to do a warm intro? Could you repeat that, please? Uh, I said, would you be willing to do a warm intro? Sure. Uh, I, I'd be happy to reach out to them and try to press on this uh, this topic if you'll intro me. Could you explain that for me? A warm intro and more slowly, please? Yeah, uh, warm intro, just uh, an introduction, right? So that I'm not coming in cold as someone they've never heard of. Uh, by Michael making the introduction to me, they'll be more receptive to any message uh, I, I try to push out toward them. So what we need to do is have um, some kind of board direction as to what the communication should be. I agree. So we should plan it out a bit. Okay. So and uh, Fr Frank has something. Yeah. Um, you know Phil Sussman, don't you, at Norwich? I do. Phil Sussman is joined to Patrick Leahy's hip, and he brings in millions a year from the feds. You may want to reach out to Phil Sussman to see if he can help us. Okay. I'll put that on my list of things to do. I do want to throw in my perspective here because I think the path is going to be a very large. We lost. So it's not. Um, we lost you right I'll after. Start the again. Path is. Give me a high sign. Does anybody see me? Does anybody see? Does anybody hear me? I mean. I hear okay. you. Yes. We can hear you. The way, to, the way I understand this will work is there will be a large federal pot, and the federal pot will be distributed directly to the states. And I, this will not be like an FCC where individual entities around the like CUDs 
would appeal for the federal pot, but rather it'll go to the state. And so I just think we need to make sure that the state understands the role of the CUDs. And then this discussion is happening because there's another path, which has been the, what do we call those grants? The, the grants that take place every year, where the Comcast and Consolidated's um are the primary recipients um An activity so I, I think you know it's certainly worthwhile to remind our congressional delegation that vermont is on the, the verge of having a significant amount of community um, broadband um and, and that that we should do that but in terms i don't think it's necessary to have it be structured in such a way that we become primary recipients i think that that discussion is going to be at the state level do you think the state right. level Ken, do you think the state's interest is in trends or in consolidated communication? That's where our work is. <laughs> I know where my interest is. So yeah, so I, I, this is a, this, I think this is a, a good segue to something that I wanted to bring up. Um, uh, at the legislature, there's folks there that are also connected to our federal delegation and that are also, you know, if you watch the video, you know, they're interested in actually, you know, um, advocating for what we're talking about with the FCC and um, advocating on our behalf. So I, I, I think, you know, I think our state officials um, would prefer to work with groups like ours than the larger incumbents because, um, you know, we're sort of walking in EC Fiber's footprints, and if we can be as successful as EC Fiber, then that's a then that's a win in a number of different ways. Um, in terms of getting those getting our projects in front of the state, so that should the federal funds come down, uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is collecting a list of these shovel ready pro projects, uh, dates, amounts, um, all that, and they already have ours. They have ours through the next five projects. I just gave them a sort of, here's the shovel ready project we're ready to do within the next year um, with the same numbers that we used for the application to the, um, the NBRC grant. And then I essentially sort of just kind of cookie cutter re replace that for the other four um, similar areas that were previously identified by Fred. Um, so that's, that's out there. We are in a big list of municipal um, um, and municipal projects that could be ready to go should that, that funding come. Um, and I wanted to, bef um, before we get to, to RDOF, or if we are, I don't know if we're still talking more about RDOF, um, there is a, there was a concern and I posted something, um, I posted something to all of you about a podcast. And if you don't have time to listen to the podcast, it's, it's, it's kind of good, but there's also a transcript at the same, same site. They, they're talking about, uh, Starlink, Elon Musk, you know, convincing the FCC that, uh, Starlink is going to be gigabit capable. So, which will allow them to compete at, on the same level as fiber to the premises like we are and they could conceivably come down and say we want to do gigabit for every address in the United States and walk away with the whole bank um, so that's something that we should just be aware of I think um, and then if we are going to look at RDOF or if we're going to look for somebody an alternate that's not WEC because it doesn't sound like they're moving forward I think we need to strongly consider ValleyNet I think we need to approach them and uh, think about asking them if they're willing to apply for ARDA funds to help us get that. David, that was my topic. Um, my motion was to give the Business Development Committee permission to solicit ISPs who might be interested in working with us, including ValleyNet, but also opening up to other people. I strongly agree. This is Ken. I want to make that a formal motion. <laughs> I was making a motion that the Business Development Committee had authority to solicit, write, writing up a basically a request for interest and and send it out to. The, uh, so far, I, I think if you looked at my schedule, I have about five or six listed there. Um, there may be more, but I think we should. I mean, I'm I'm inclined to allowing that myself, but I, you know, who knows who else? I mean, whether you know Wakefield Telecom or a Telco from Maine, which has some presence in Vermont might be interested in working with us. The question is, is really whether they, 
they're going to go on their own or whether they want a team with CD fiber on this. Um, that, I mean, that's my biggest concern. Michael, what do you think? Um, well, I, Greg and I worked up a list of, um, I don't know, I forget the number, but it was more than a dozen ISPs in the area and a couple outside of the area that we okay. should consider talking with. No, it's, looking, on, it's on your work schedule worksheet. Yeah, I'm looking for a motion from the board to authorize us to go ahead and doing that. So moved. Okay. And Ken okay, will so second. Who moved that? John. John moved okay. that. Okay. Ken seconded. Okay. By, seconded by Ken. By Ken. Okay. And Frank, you want to add something something to this? Right now, I think it's spot on. Okay. So, Ray. Any, anything else on this? Yeah, Ray posted uh, to keep it local in Vermont. I mean, Telco is a main company, but they have a presence in Vermont. So, I don't know whether that's local enough or not. Mm. My feeling is we'll see who okay. we get. Any other discussion on this? Okay. 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 Any other discussion on uh, David's request to have uh, the Business Development Committee seek um, co applicants, we'll call them? Uh, I, I just want to add okay. that I, I, I think. Uh, Fred and Interisle will probably have some advice to impart on this as well. Yeah. Okay. So can I read that back real quick just to make sure that I've got it noted down correctly? Or sure. something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. So uh, the Business Development Committee should be uh, given the authority to pursue co-applicant ISPs for the purpose of pursuing RDOF funding. Is that... Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to assume we have consensus unless anyone would like to do a roll call. Hearing no dissent, um, the motion has passed. Thank you very much. Anything else on uh, any, that we want to talk about with uh, RDA for funding or grants, stimulus, etc.? I don't have anything for that. Thanks, David. Uh, I have a couple, couple little facts about RDOF. That it, um, it looks like um, the first stage of application called the short form may be delayed, um, which is to our advantage because it was coming up too fast on us, um, maybe July instead of June, for example. Um, and, um, our, and a, in the testimony yesterday about RDOF, there was a little bit of confusion about um, census block groups and 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 whether a successful bidder in RDOF has to serve every every location in in the census block group. And the answer is yes, every single location in the census block group, whether it's identified as um, underserved or not, you you get you get money for the ones that are underserved, but you have to serve all of them even if they're not on the same roads, even if they're on the other side of a mountain. Hmm. That's it. But we knew that. Well, there was some confusion in the hearing about. Right. Okay, uh, anything else, Michael? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's move on. CV Fiber 2020 timeline and stepping up. So I'm going to let David present his timeline, but this is my um, um, bully pulpit that I'm going to say, I'm going to echo what David said is that, so if you haven't been actively working on one of these items that, that are in David's timeline, and David, if you want to, you can actually share your screen. If you wanted to put your timeline up, you could do that. Um, I can, um, yeah, with, as a presenter, I can give you, if do you want access for that? I'll, I'll give you access. You're I think you might be muted. David. 
it's now in my screen, so I don't know if you guys can see it. Do I have to take? Yeah, I'll, here, I'll... Jeremy has to pass presentership yeah, to you on. first. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, so while David's setting this up, I'm going to ask uh, firmly but politely um, if there's if you haven't been participating or if you haven't um, participated in any of these so far, I would strongly recommend pick a few of them and not just pick one, but I would say pick a few of these because we, we need help. These are not um, individually. These are not heavy lifts but we will need people to actually own and drive forward some of these things. Uh, and that could just be, you know, a bit of, bit of research. Um, it could be some phone calls. It could be, um, you know, doing a, a little bit of writing, but we really, really, really need everybody, absolutely positively everybody on the call right now to show up and be a part of getting this done. Because if we don't, um, we're going to have a real hard time hitting our timeline um, or hitting our uh, destination. So if you if it kind of like scroll down to the bottom, David, slowly, so everybody can just get a sense of the amount um, of individual items that need to be managed before we get to something like actually doing engineering or build out or turning uh, a customer on. Um, these are... Yeah, these, but these are all necessary check boxes that we have to check. So I would encourage you, David sent out that link. I would encourage you just go and visit that and sign yourself up or put, um, you know, put a little note on there. Or if you want, send him, send me a message or send David a message and we'll, you know, maybe find a, a suitable item for you. Um, One of the things I is trying to get this into a Google Calendar so that people who sign up for a particular thing actually know when a particular task is expected to be done. And I need to do this for myself because I already missed one. <laughs> and so it's, it's a long list. And, you know, Phil's list is not even in there in terms of getting, uh, you know, notes of uh, promissory notes. So it's a lot of work. Um, and I'm really looking for yeah, we all got a row in this getting this going. I think fundraising is going to be a big one. And, you know, I don't have a lot of detail on fundraising, but I know that, you know, if everybody can do its part, it'll work. But without a calendar like this, I was having trouble just trying to keep track of what I was trying to do and move things forward. Now, I, you know, I have an advantage over a lot of you because I've, you know, mostly retired. And so I spend a lot of time on CV Fiber. Um, and I really wanted to succeed, so I need your help on this. So that's my pitch. <clears throat> and if you if you lost the link, I can resend it to you. It's all a Google Sheet. Would, yeah. Would, would you send that again, David? Just just send, yeah, send it anyways. I will. Yeah. Let me see. And this this built on Ken Jones's list, right? Yes, this came from Ken. This is Ken's initial uh, um, take that we had to do. The only thing that's not in here, <laughs> finding a manager. Mm. And getting a manager, getting money for a manager. Yep. So, anyway, so that's that's my, my the, the schedule. I think, you know, the, the, the committees have been, you know, the, 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 uh, the Michaels and the Chucks and the, the Ken's and a lot of Ray's and Jeremy, the, the Jerry, we're really pulling, <laughs> pulling a lot of weight to get this happening. And so I know most of you don't have time to listen to legislative committees, but I have to say, in listening this week to both the Senate and to the House, they don't have a lot of faith in the administration. I can tell you that much. Um, doing, doing good by CUDs or by local government. So it's sort of an interesting, you know, sort of, I don't know. You know it, it was the legislature who got the bill passed last year. It wasn't certainly the, the administration didn't fight it, but they certainly didn't propose it. So I think we're going to continue to see a little bit of that as the year goes on and next year goes on. It's not clear what the legislature is going to be able to do this year at all, anyway. So 
Well, that's my sort of pitch. I, I can stop showing now if it's okay. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll change it back to me, which is nothing. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to post the the draft meeting minutes here for a second. Um, I'm just take just your your text stuff, Chuck. I'm just going to put that. I'm going to post that to the um, the handouts section. Uh, stand by. It does not like a text file, really. I can slap it into a Google Doc pretty quick if you want. Sure, that would be that would be great if you could do that. And just if you, yeah, just in post post it in the uh, as a view only, and then I'll I'll post it to the uh, the whole audience. <laughs> I mean, this is Frank. I've got to bow out. This has been a great meeting. This yep. is a great way to do the meetings. All right. Well, maybe we will continue doing this. Uh, we'll just need to get better audio once we get back to a physical location. All right. Whenever we are, I'll see you on campus. All right. See you, Frank. So while Chuck's doing that, real quick, Jeremy. Is there a, do you have a list of who attends as like an attendance sheet? Um, we, yeah, we can go back through the minutes. I mean, I, I don't have like a, I had a spreadsheet for like for our first year about who, who attended, but. Is, is that something that needs to be in the minutes? Uh, it, it isn't, it is in all the minutes. I just don't have it in an easily, easily like analyzable, right. broken down Excel form. No, okay, that that's fine. But what I'm talking about is like for this, I'm going to need to get you minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, do I need to write <laughs> down all the people that are on the call right now, or do you? Uh, have I, I jotted it down and can send it over to you. Okay, that'd be helpful. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, this is Jerry Diamantides. You may need to add me because I think I show up as caller number seven or something like that. So. <laughs> I, I, I gave you I gave you panelist uh, panelist. I saw when you logged in, I had your you had your name and I gave you the reason that we can all hear you is that I, I switched your rights. So you're all you're all good. Thank you, Jeremy. Yes, um, I'd like to invite Philip's attention to uh, this the implementation schedule and item number eight. It says prepare Vita loan application. Do you see it in front of you? Uh, yeah. I don't have that up on my screen right now. I, I, I can okay. bring it I up. Just, I would just note that um, it says raise 10% match starting 27 June and ending August 26th. And this gets back to my point earlier. That is that you were talking about when to do something. We have to reverse engineer back from these dates. Mm -hmm. to get that documentation ready for this campaign that has to start uh, in order and be completed by that period of time, which is a guesstimate at this point. But until we get further um, refinement on this, we, we should aim for this target. Yeah, and some of the, the fundraising stuff, there's a, a kind of check boxes too. I, I know that Chuck is working on furiously in terms of, of outreach. So yeah, it's uh, you know I, I think that what David put together here was you know his best estimates of when we have to get these things done and yeah maybe they're maybe they're not 100% realistic with some of the other things that have to fall into place first but I think we're gonna try to hit these as well as we can. Yeah, and don't be bashful about changing the dates. <laughs> yeah, I actually started. I, I I had to change one or two that made more sense. We can always go back and revert if we need to. If if we had that, uh, Jeremy, a link, chart, a link to the minutes uh, to be in your inbox to, to share. Okay. Okay. Can, you, can you repeat, Ray? Yeah. So, Jeremy, what I was saying was that uh, you already changed some dates. If we if this were in a Gantt chart and you had changed those dates, other things might have shifted. Because it's in a spreadsheet, it's not going to automatically do that. And so, we're going to need to get this into a into a tool in which we can see the uh, the correlation uh, among all of these uh, parts. 
and all the defendants. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is the uh, you know the heavy project management approach or the light project management approach. I mean, I'm I'm happy to roll with whatever everybody chooses, but if we're going to go and populate a Microsoft project project or if we're going to you know go build gantt charts and this sort of thing we can do that but somebody needs to own putting that together and i think what david's got here is in terms of a handful of lightweight tasks that need some some later than others um that need to be done um i'm honestly i'm more of the opinion that we we know that these things need to be done let's do these things and so yes of course there are knock-ons and there's a way in the spreadsheet that you could have you know one thing must follow another so we can make sure that the you know the end date of one thing becomes the start date of the next thing and have equalities that way too um we just haven't set all that up yet but but but, but i think rather than spending too much time worrying about the the meta i think we just need to just start start going yeah jeremy that kind of of proactive management is really hard to get out of volunteers. Uh, you got to pay somebody to to do that. We're and and we're on the cusp of that. We're really pushing what volunteers can do effectively. And and Ray's saying in the chat, let's hire an executive director as a project manager again cart horse you know we've you know chicken egg however whatever we could we need money to have an executive director but we need an executive director to get money of course so right now we know what we have to do we have some of these tasks that we have to do let's just do the tasks so again if there's something in there that you see that you can um participate on or help get done i mean some of these are short like tally results which is assigned to looks like communications committee uh if you want to be a part of that yeah put your name cc comma you know john doe or whatever these are all yeah so do do your best to engage how you can i'm i'm I, I i don't think i'm out of line here saying that we're not going to have an executive director we're not going to have an executive director before we start getting some actual real money in front of us Yes, and if the, so, and Ray's saying if executive director is something the legislature can do, yes, we'll, we'll continue to talk to the legislature, but the legislature, as quickly as they want to move right now, it's very unlikely that they're going to procure any funds before, um, you know, before summer. I mean, and that would be the most optimistic, and that's they get a bunch of federal dollars dropped in their lap, and they say, okay, here you go, executive director, make it happen. Then, well, who's executive director then? We have to hire somebody. We have to go through that process. So, I mean, I'm just saying that we've got all of these things to do for the next three, four months. Um, executive director, I, it's just, I, I just don't think it's a feasible. Um, I, I, I don't think it's a feasible part of the plan that's going to get us across the finish line by next year. Um, if we manage to get that um, along the line. And we can start shifting some of the responsibility to them. I think everybody, I think especially David, is just gonna just gonna you know can take a big take a deep breath. Um, I, I just don't think that we're there right now. And and anybody, please please correct me if I'm coloring outside of the lines. I agree with you, Jeremy. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Um, so we have the March meeting minutes. Is there anything uh, in there? Um, I, I know you're just seeing this now. We could, we, we don't have to approve these now. Do you want to, uh, do you want to hold off and wait till next meeting? Or are you ready to approve these now? Approve them now. Okay, that sounds like John making a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Any seconds? Second. Okay, seconded by Siobhan, thank you. Um, any uh, any changes or updates aside from uh, even s simple corrections or? For what it's worth, I just finished uh, adding the formatting, so it is it is now formatted. It was plain text when I pasted it in there. So 
Uh, you might want to give it just a, a one more look through if you looked at it when I first shared the link. Okay. Take another minute and see if anybody finds anything. There we go. Does it matter to anyone that it's not on the CV fiber letterhead at this point? And can we retroactively add that if we approve it? Yes, that's easy enough. Thank you, Jeremy. Is there a motion on the floor? And there's. Uh, yeah, so I just there is a motion. I just wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to review it. And there's a couple of uh, spelling uh, issues that I can I can go back and correct once we put it on letterhead and post it out there. Um, names and things like that. Okay. Um, so unless anybody has any feedback, um, I'm going to assume that we have consensus to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you for all your work, Chuck. Really do appreciate that. So unless somebody wants a roll call. Okay, and the motion passes by consensus. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to uh, roundtable. Let me, um, I'm just going to go through the attendees in alphabetical order so that you're not so surprised. Um, so we'll start with uh, Alan Gilbert. Alan? Anything for roundtable? Okay. He needs, he needs internet. All right. So yeah, yeah, he's still he's still muted, but if if, if he wants to say something later, we'll catch him. I'll keep my eye on it. Uh, Andy Gilbert. Uh, I'm good. Just thank you, everybody, and let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andy. Chuck. I'm all set. Thank you, everyone. All right, David. Um, I I want to make sure people keep in mind as we go forward, looking for anchor tenants, and talking to your school boards, and keeping everybody in loop. Post things on front porch forum. Let them know there's a frequently asked question, frequently asked questions now on the website for anybody who wants to know what we're up to, what we're doing. Um, and it was sort of generated because of I've been trying to get a little writer locally to do a story on us and he said well shit i don't know anything about you guys and how you're working so that's what Je that was the genesis of the faqs anyway so that's my pitch for the round table all right thanks david uh jeremy um thanks for all your work david <laughs> and everyone else but mostly david <laughs> yeah definitely all right, uh, Jerry. Nothing to add after that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John Russell. Yes. It's been a good meeting, though. This has been a good meeting. I think we've done well for. Uh... Thank you. Sure. Thanks, John. Jonathan Williams. I saw you unmute, but I can't hear you. Okay, he remuted. If you, you can send me a uh, send a message in the chat if you like. Oh, he said his audio isn't working. Apologies. Okay, um, Josh Jarvis. I'd just like to reiterate. Uh, thanks for uh, David and everybody else for all the work that they've done. Clearly, uh, based on the spreadsheet. Um, I have a few of those myself, <laughs> so I know what it's like to get something like that. But we're all definitely like, like Jeremy said, we're gonna have to definitely all of us from here and really put in um, some some time to get some of these things done. Um, so I'll probably be reaching out here shortly just to see where I might fit in on some of these things, um, so that I can just 
participate as much as I possibly can with the, with the time that I have allotted. So thank you. All right. Ken? I have nothing tonight. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ken. Michael? Question for Chuck. What was that phrase? Exit exigencies or something like that? The, the warm intro? Uh, no. Earlier, you said something about some kind oh, of. Oh, 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 exit. oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it's called an exit interstitial. Interstitial is an experience on a website that interrupts the flow. And um, so when basically when you mouse out of the website, like you're going to go to close the tab or something like that, then the pop-up comes up that says enter your email address. And, and if we were a big company, we'd be A-B testing that against, you know, something that uh, does it different ways to see what our users respond to most. But um, that's a lot harder. Thank you. I have no comment. I just wanted to learn that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Michael. Phil? I pass. I'm good. Thanks. All right, uh, Ray, you're up next. Yeah, so I'd like to add my thanks to uh, all the folks, Dave, Phil, Chuck, Jeremy, uh, for all the work they're doing, and also put in a plug for folks to finish their community reports so that we can get that notice up on Front Porch Forum so we can stay in front of the communities so that we go to hit them up for subscriptions and for loans and grants and stuff. They'll know that we're continuing to move forward. Sounds good. Here, here. Thanks, right? Siobhan? Uh, oh, there I am. There I am. So I'm yep. I'm going through the survey results to try and get this into little green light for finally. And one of the comments that I got, I want to read it to you. Your company is going to have to do more than give out a survey to get my money. Prove you're serious about investing in service and prove that you can make it happen. So I, I, I feel like challenge accepted. <laughs> so that that's my comment that's let's do this all right let's do this all right uh uh thanks siobhan tom i i'd uh like to echo some of the sentiments of thanks um especially uh, ray thanks for putting out that uh, link to the committee hearing for the house I, I managed to catch that and uh jeremy you had a really strong presentation there on the forum so thank you um, I noticed in that conversation around broadband how uh, references around broadband definitions still have 25 down and three up as, as you know, the standard. Um, but particularly having that nominal level myself and, and in this crisis when everybody in, and their dog is getting on the internet at the same time, uh, how much that really just doesn't cut it. Um, I mean, doing my testing some of the midday week, work week, um, I was at like eight and a quarter of a, of a mix. So um, I'm just hoping that some of the information that comes to light through this is like how that number just doesn't really make sense for us living out here in the sticks. And I'm hoping that they don't keep using that reference over and over because it's just nonsensical. But yeah, that's it. Other than that, great meeting. All right. Thanks, Tom. Hi, Andy. We finally, finally get your video from up there in Cabot. All right. Uh, I'll give uh, Alan Gilbert, if you want to have uh, one last chance, or if your audio, oh, you're passing slow connection here. Okay, fair enough. Um, so I, I, I want to ask uh, two things. Um, first of all, if I could get any feedback from all of you about how this worked, if you can send me any uh, any emails, if you think this worked, if this would be better if something else happened, uh, if it was all just a conference call, just on the phone or something, I, I, I don't know. Whatever you think is going to make this work better, you let me know. Um, second of all, um, I, we should have done this earlier, but I would like to make a motion that we will hold a special meeting on um, April 28th, which is uh, two weeks from now, uh, at the same time at 6 p.m. Uh, with the same format. Second. And Chuck seconded that. All right, any uh, any further discussion on holding a special meeting in two weeks? Just, just one dokey. point, Jeremy. I, one point on that. Are you, are you doing that for the inter-aisle 
a document? That's what I. That's what I thought. Uh, that was for. okay. No, nope, just 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 checking because we uh, haven't confirmed that date uh, with Interisle as a date that they're available. So we can okay. we can we can certainly put that on the on the on the calendar and tell them that this is our date, but we have not confirmed that date with them. Okay, if we need to move it, we'll we'll figure something out then. Very good. Thank um, you. Thanks, um, Jerry. I would also throw in that it would be good to get whatever documents need to be reviewed a few days ahead of time um, before that as well. Yeah. Absolutely, that's the intention. Okay, and I have a question from um, one of our attendees, um, not on the board. He's asking, will the meeting on April 28th be open to the public non-board members as this meeting was? Uh, yes, it's um, any of our meetings, committee meetings or board meetings uh, must be open to the public given that we are a public uh, municipality. So um, you can send, uh, if you want a notice uh, or a, a any sort of uh, agenda in advance for that. Uh, you can either look at the Facebook page, you can look at cvfiber.net, or if you send me a message, um, central.vermont.internet at gmail.com, and I will send, I will put you on our distribution list for any time we have uh, agendas and such going out. So thank you for that question, Tim. So um, any other comments about April 28th? So you you didn't oh I'm sorry. Yeah, so it was a it was moved and seconded. I'm just trying to see if there's any other discussion. All right. So if there's no other discussion, um, I'm going to assume that we have consensus unless I hear a request for a roll call. Hearing none, I'm assuming that we have consensus and the motion passes. We'll be meeting again on April 28th in two weeks. And uh, this concludes the meeting tonight. We only went 11 minutes over, not too bad for a first, uh, a first crack at a, at a different format. So have a wonderful night, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. you, Jeremy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.